All right, guys, welcome back to the show. For the next couple of episodes, we're gonna be doing a three-part project. What I'm gonna do is show you how to make this, a fully restored vintage heirloom axe. So I'm gonna start with this old rusty axe head that I got off eBay. Part one is gonna be restoring the axe head, getting it all sharp and shined up. Part two is gonna be prepping and attaching the handle. This is a store-bought handle but by the time I get done with it, it's gonna be unrecognizable. We're gonna strip off all the varnish that comes on it. We're gonna put a nice hand rubbed finish on it. I'm gonna fit it to the ax head. It's gonna fit just perfect. I'm gonna show you how to do that. In the last part of the series, I'm gonna teach you how to use this inexpensive craft leather to make a custom leather sheath for the ax. So let's start by taking a look at the bit. This is a vintage ax bit. It says Ingersoll on it, so that's probably the maker. Um, as you'll notice, here on the edges, it's got a little bit of mushrooming. Axes are not designed to hammer on the back. It's not hardened metal. So we'll kind of reprofile this a little bit. It's also got some pitting. We're not gonna worry about taking away all the pitting, but we will kind of shine it up and make sure that it looks nice. And then lastly, I'll show you how to reprofile the blade and get it razor sharp. So to take care of this mushrooming on the back of the bit, I'm gonna use a bench grinder. I've never really come across a vintage bit that didn't have at least a little bit of mushrooming in here because people just, I guess they just tend to uh, bang on stuff with them. But this one's really not too bad and it doesn't really take too long to get it taken care of. So let me show you how we do it. So as you can kind of see here, I've just taken off just a little bit of that mushrooming. It's just a smooth, every time I take a pass here on the grinder, I just check with my finger to see if I've taken care of it. You don't want to take off more than you have to. All right, step two. You're gonna need a angle grinder. This is just a small, I think it's a four and a half inch angle grinder, a Makita. Um, and I've got a 60 grit flap wheel mounted to this thing. So I'm just gonna mount my ax bit in my bench vise here, get to work. Now we don't want to ruin any of the steel, so again, I'm just gonna go nice and easy, not keeping the grinder on any part of the bit for any extended period of time. mill file. This stage takes a little while so you just got to be patient and take off metal little by little until you get a nice profiled edge. And what I do is I basically hold it at you know around a 15 degree angle is that there are some little tiny chips in the blade. So we want to make sure we file down until all those are gone. And then you also notice that all of these pop marks are here as well. So at least on the blade, we're going to try to remove all the pitting and get rid of any chips and have a nice smooth, sharp edge. Let me show you what we got here. You see there's some little striations in the metal from the file. That's fine. We're going to get rid of those next in the next phase. But we've basically gotten rid of most of the pockmarks and it's got a nice smooth edge. There's no chips in the edge. 
At this stage, the blade is wickedly sharp, so you gotta be really, really careful. We could put it on a handle and just cut wood with it right now, but the blade would dull very quickly. So let me show you how to get it sharp in a way that's gonna keep it sharp. So these are my sharpening stones. I've got four different grits of stones. We're gonna start with the coarsest stone, and then we're going to move down to the finest stone. All right, so let's get going with our coarsest stone. We're just gonna very, very carefully and slowly in circular patterns go along the edge here. I cannot tell you how many times I've cut myself and I've cut myself pretty badly doing this. So you wanna go slow and you wanna be really careful. It's gonna actually seem like it's getting duller before it gets sharper. And I think the reason why that is, is when you use the file, you end up with a blade that's actually a little bit serrated. So it seems really, really sharp when you touch it because of the little mini serrations. And what we're doing is we're removing those serrations and it's just gonna be a very, very smooth edge. Wardrobe change. Sorry, I got a little bit late, so I decided to just change into my comfy clothes and get this finished up. Okay, so we're on the fine side of our double-sided stone here, and I'm just gonna do a couple more passes here. Now what I'm looking for when I'm moving between stones is just for it to get kind of a uniform scratch pattern. Now this is looking pretty uniform, so I'm gonna switch to this stone, which is a little bit finer than the previous one. Now I'm gonna switch to my last stone. It's the finest stone that I've got. Now we've got an edge that is absolutely razor sharp. It still looks a little bit rough, so there's one more step that I usually do that's gonna make it look really nice, and it also helps it stay sharp for a really, really long time. All right guys, it's getting kind of late, so I'm gonna call it a day for now. I know I originally said I was gonna break this series into three parts. I think it may actually be four or five parts. I think that might be a little bit more digestible. Uh, so yeah, just let me know if you guys have any questions, and we'll see you tomorrow.